see you, Ashton. Good to see you. How have you been? been way too long. Ready for the interview? Absolutely. How have you been? I've been doing pretty good. Mm-hmm. It's been a minute. So catch us up where you're living. What's been going on with you the last decade or two? <laughs> Just like that. The last decade or two. Um, I made a few records the last decade or two. Uh, I've written a book. I am just finished my second book for the new album. Um, I live, I share my time between upstate New York and St. Louis, Missouri, so I can really cover a great swath of the of, the, of these United States. And um, like everybody else, I was uh, hiding from the plague for the better part of three years. And um, just before the plague started, my dad passed away. My mom and dad were scheduled to come and live here with us. And he passed away and we went back to to help mom with everything. And uh, as we were doing that, COVID started. So we, we, we got out just as they were closing the borders in South Africa. Um, so she lives with us now. She she has an apartment downstairs. So she's, she lives with us and our um, grow up. <laughs> A growing ensemble of rescue cats, you know. Um, yeah, last couple of decades, that's that's a lot. Just lots yeah. of re- lots of records, I guess, you know. Um, done some touring. Again, pre-pandemic touring was easier, <laughs> and yeah. then, and then it was non-existent, and and now I'm I'm slowly assembling things again. So, yeah, what else do you want to know? <laughs> Good. Good. Well, um, when you write the tunes on Autumn's Children, when mm. did you write the tunes, mm-hmm. and what are some what are some stories behind them? Most of Autumn's Children was written in November of 2021. I had um, I put out Waiting for a Voice was the last solo album I put out in 2020 with my first book of poems and short stories and musings and other oddities and uh then i went like i think the pandemic obviously had a massive effect on everybody and i think the way i dealt with it was just i kept creating um almost with the understanding that i wouldn't be touring the stuff you know i i I still i created waiting for a voice the the book and album thinking i'd be touring and had a tour booked internationally and all the rest but obviously couldn't do that and um, so not long after putting that out, I, I hopped back into the other guys as The Awakening and I, I made a, a very electronic album called This Alchemy. And then a bunch of other projects and side projects and things which I duly shelved because I didn't trust my sanity all that much. And um, just as I was getting back, back together with uh, creating Autumn's Children, I had the sudden impulse to go and make a really heavy awakening album. So I went and did that and that's called The Passage Remains and it was a double album and all of that. And um, felt like that that helped um, carve out some some headspace to to fully focus on on the job at hand. So beginning of um, this year, I guess, I, I really buckled down and, and kept going with Autumn's Children. And uh, so to answer the first question, yeah, November 2021 is when most of the songs are written. There are a couple that are a lot older that have just been patiently waiting in the box under the stairs for a chance to um, join their their brethren on an appropriate album. And um, that, that happened. I think the writing is very personal on this record and um, especially I guess with so much of it being written right in the middle of the pandemic. I haven't written songs about the pandemic. I think we've probably all had enough of those by this point. Mm-hmm. But they're it just like most of us, I think it just I looked inward like I think many of us did when you literally cut off from the outside world. And um, so yeah, the songs are, are a lot more personal. They, they deal with various things. Um, from just the beauty of, of nature and the, the cycle of life and the importance of all 
the relationships we have and and, and all of that. And um, there are a couple. And there's the odd cynical song because I am me and I can't help being just a little cynical here and there. Maybe every other song. <laughs> um, and but yeah, I think it's just a it's a level of fragility that I've never really um, explored. Um, hmm. just stripping it down, not just in a musical sense, but even the style of singing is more fragile, you know, it's just um, more intimate. And yeah, I mean, I realized how brave you need to be to actually do that. It's actually a lot easier to do things that are big and loud and uh, uh, lay it out. Oh, that's pretty. You got wind chimes in the background. Thanks. I decided to do this outdoors. It's just, that's a good idea. It's 101 here, so I'm not, I'm inside today. Yeah. Um, yeah, just, uh, I don't think I'd ever really explored that before. I, I, I started exploring it on Waiting for a Voice and um, I've just kind of gone further with it, I guess, with this record. And um, with Waiting for a Voice, when I started writing the lyrics, I realized that they looked good on a page and thought, well, maybe let's publish them. Um, and then that kind of got the, the wheels turning and my wife had been nagging me to write a book or do something other than music for <laughs> for many reasons, um, for, for many years now. And uh, so I took the that whole pandemic thing and just, and dad passing and, and uh, used that as a catalyst to actually write a book because there was no tour coming. And um, similarly, I've wanted to do that with this album because I feel like we're, we're, we're pretty much through all of that um, for, the, for the most part. And um, I'm sort of continuing with this this, this journey of mine and um, writing a book again felt like a completely natural, almost the essential thing to do as, as part of the record. So I might have lost my way some way if I was answering a question, but I think more or less. Yeah. No, it's all good. I'm glad you brought up fragility. I, uh, I applaud you for doing that. And I, I imagine that that the value of being vulnerable and fragile was not lost on you, that you probably knew that as an artist, that sometimes the best art is when something comes out of your own vulnerability and struggle and fragility. So Absolutely. For that. thank you. Honestly, yeah, it's, it's I mean, it's, it's always appealed to me in the things I enjoy listening to and watching and reading and, and so on. And yes, I've, I've I have songs that, that are indeed fragile by nature, but I think I wanted to just take it further with how I sang and, and, and really just just focus on the words and how I sing them and, and, and really not worry about anything else. And then kind of once that was once I was happy with that, I would see if the song needed anything else. So it's just a I've almost I've almost gone back to a, a very traditional way of songwriting where I, I sit with an iPhone and and an acoustic guitar and and just sing nonsense on, onto you know just vocal melodies and 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 i write hundreds of songs that way and then i decide what's what's going to kind of you know what's what stands out at the end of the day and so this album ended up writing to song. nice i'm glad you brought that up i was going to ask you i'm curious how you write what the process is for you the garden for example did you start out on a piano, acoustic guitar? How did this song evolve and get its various parts added? Yeah, that was also, these were all written on acoustic guitar. Um, the Garden, the Garden was it was a few years, it's, it's, it's one of the elder statesmen in the, in the, on the album. It's not that old, it was, but it was written just before I did Waiting for a Voice. And for a while, I wanted to include it, but to me, it feels like an opening an opening to a new chapter. It, feel, it, felt, it felt like a starting point to a new chapter. And I'm glad I held on to it because it, it's, you know, I think it does a good job where it is now and, it, and it's uh, in, in, in more appropriate company, you could say, um, sonically and uh, emotionally. And yeah, that I just, I just, uh, I was just messing around with chords, trying to find prettier ways to play things. And I just liked the way those chords flowed and, and the, the, the um, voicings, you know, and to me it felt very natural and organic and that 
in you know was a marriage with with the lyrics and um so the other bits on that song were added afterwards yeah the piano bits and other strange sounds <laughs> wow i'd never know listening to it because my first thought was that it starts off with the piano it just sounds like wow you probably just sat down and wrote this on the ivories but uh mm -hmm. it's it's perfectly placed it sounds organic and thank you I like it thank you yeah um, i i've still been uh, threatening to make a video for that one because uh my son keeps nagging me to make a video for that one and I had intended to, and then, you know, you get lost, you, you jump in somewhere and you just get lost in your own world. And anyway, I'll, that's on my to-do list as soon as the, the weather calms down a little bit. It's a bit, it's a bit warm nice. on the outside, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, you talked a little bit about, you know, just being a musician and artist these days, an author now. Uh, so I wanted to ask you, what are the struggles and success routes for a musical artist such as yourself these days? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Um, well, the struggles are, I guess, the obvious ones that you probably hear from, from everybody, which is that with uh, the entry level being open to all now, you, you are, whilst that's wonderful and everyone gets a chance to get, to, to get their voice heard and all that, positive stuff the the other side is that you know you're kind of lost in the flood there's just so much content all the time everywhere from every direction um including music and um so that's tough it's really tough just getting heard i think making making new ground you know i'm fortunate to have started back in the dinosaur era so there i do have a, a very small but thankfully devoted audience that patiently follow me with <laughs> through each uh, permutation of this uh, wild career of mine and um but of course the dream we all have is always reaching new people and affecting people and affecting as many people as you can i guess you know and, and um that so that i think is the biggest challenge is just reaching people it's it's uh without you know mortgaging your house and buying a whole bunch of spots to be featured and whatever else if you're trying to do it organically it is difficult and um and i think successes for me it's always just and again this probably sounds i'm sure you've heard it before but honestly just following your your passion just never playing to an audience never worrying about who's going to like it and marketing and all of that i mean i i always feel you, you've got to just create for you because if the thing completely bombs out at least you've got a nice album that you're happy with that you, you and your 10 friends can listen to you know and i think that there's validity in that and i think that every single thing you do is a learning process and you're better for it you're better for doing it i think just sitting back and and bemoaning the fact that once streaming happened none of us get paid for cds anymore and all. yeah yeah we, we know that and, and it does suck i mean it, it was <laughs> i still remember the day i woke up and and itunes had changed into apple music overnight you know and i was getting paid for downloads one day and the next day was surprise it's all free and yeah that that's rough but with with those changes come new opportunities and new ways of reaching people and um I guess if you if you if you want to keep doing that, you you have to adapt. I mean, I think it's and uh, I've I've not yet started a TikTok account, but um, other than that, I think I try and remain relatively up to date with getting the word out, you know. And um, but yes, the positives again. I think more than ever, staying true to yourself and and. Um, writing for yourself really i mean if, if you love it odds are someone else is going to love it right <clears throat> that's cool pink floyd yes they're not very gothic yet they are uh -huh. i hear some really cool layers of guitar in into the dream that remind me of pink floyd both old and not as old pink floyd okay your comments well, I am a Pink Floyd fan, so I guess I honestly 
my com my first comment is surprise really because I, I wasn't in that headspace when I made that song. I was coming coming at it from a David Lynch David Lynch meets Black Star Bowie kind of place. Um, but I can certainly see how those tones and flavors have a Pink Floydness to them as well because I think you know the sound of Pink Floyd has done a good job of permeating a lot of modern music you know I mean it's 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 everywhere right um, yeah I, that's interesting I, I wasn't expecting that but um, thank you it's a it's a huge compliment I mean it's a I'm a fan <laughs> I get it well speaking of dreams how and why do you think we associate them with sleeping or have most of them while we are sleeping? What's up with that? What mysteries about dreams do you feel like you've uncovered or discovered? Hmm. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I, de I definitely don't think you need to sleep to dream. I, I think that... Um, I like, I enjoy the the dreams we have when we sleep because we have limited control over those, and I think you can learn certain things about yourself, and and um, I think mostly about yourself really in dreams, and uh, so that that aspect appeals to me. And there's all the the kind of cliched, you know, following a dream and 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 chasing the dream and responding to the dream and and those sorts of things. And I think. It is a recurring theme on this record because I see this album as an album of journey and growth and coming, you know, don't say coming full circle, but the cycle, you know, it's the cycle of life and how we we go back to the things that that may have inspired us as children and then inspired us as teenagers and adults and so on. And I like that. I like the cyclical nature of, of life and and how dreams factor into that and how they have their own influence this thing that is relatively uncontrolled you know it's it's i think that's quite exciting I think it's quite a gift to be able to dream i've actually met people who say they don't dream and i find that incredibly sad um yeah did i get lost again or is that more or less what you asked me that's more or less what i asked you <laughs> uh a lot of your songs, like uh, Rivers Run Black, feel cinematic. Is that yeah. intentional? Yeah. Also, have you explored or attempted having your tunes licensed for films? Would you like to hear? I'd like to hear some stories about that. Yeah, thank you. Um, Rivers Run Black, Into the Dream, and um, to some degree, Secret Love are probably the most cinematic sounding songs on the album. But I think there's a cinematic element to a lot of them, I think um, go to sleep, we're talking about dreaming, but go to sleep is not at all about dreaming, it's about being told what to do, essentially. Um, but yeah, they all have a cinematic quality, and I, and I started dabbling with that on Waiting for a Voice, using uh, the cinematic ideas in stripped down acoustic music. I like the juxtaposition of that, I'm not saying I'm the only guy to do that, only person to do that, but it's uh, I've enjoyed seeing that because I think I come from, you know, the, the world, w my work with The Awakening was and is, is generally big and larger than life and, and something else. And I've, I've been looking for ways of finding different, I guess, shades and flavors with the solo work that, that rather than feeling like, oh, this is my new wave album or this is my rock and roll album, I wanted to just find something that is really unique to me. And I think I've personally, I felt like waiting for a voice. I got the closest to that. And then I just like, I've tried to just develop that and take it into different directions, yeah. different places. And uh, I have actually had some, some joy with having songs licensed. Um, not surprisingly on darker TV shows. <laughs> Um, I'm still hanging in there for, for Barbie, but I, I don't think it's going to happen. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I've, I, I wrote a song with Michael Cerevolo for his Beauty and Chaos project. Um, well, I wrote a few songs, the two of us, and um, one of them is called Bloodless and Fragile, and that, that made it onto The Purge 
which is like a horror show. And yeah. then, uh, and then as recently, I think is I don't even know what month we maybe it was this year, maybe it was early last year, I can't remember. But uh, the HBO show Pretty Little Liars. Oh yeah. They wanted the Dark Romantics by The Awakening. So I, I you know, it's only twenty three years old, the Dark Romantics, so I guess yeah. it's it's it found its time and um a timeless track it's one of my favorites thank you thank you it's um it's one that introduced most of most people who know about the awakening seem to have been introduced through that song in 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 some shape or form so it's lovely for it to be in you know yet another context it was in an obscure scene in the show i think you'd, you'd have to listen hard to know where it was um but it it it's always encouraging to see your work just again find new listeners and and new audiences and uh and because i'm so drawn to cinema and uh and and theater but in this case the, the cinematic aspect it's it's lovely to see that married up you know i didn't make a video for dark romantics and now it's in a tv show so you know there you go <laughs> yeah <laughs> i wonder what it would take to uh license that material since you license the music to them if they would license it back or if it could be like a scratch your back my my back kind of favor yeah I, i'm not i think i think I, I don't think i could afford that yeah yeah <laughs> um how important is childhood or your childhood to your songs why or why not do you sense that being a conscious or subconscious theme it's definitely a theme on this record yes it again it started with waiting for a voice. Um, I, I started actually. It started more in the in the waiting for a voice book because I, I finished the album before my father passed, and you know when your father passes, I think you know you 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 become reflective and introspective just about that event, and of course you you play back aspects of your childhood and so on, and. I think a lot of that was a little stunted because, you know, he, he died and then COVID happened and we brought mom back and we were all just dealing with all of that. And um, so in the book itself, I spoke more about him and and aspects of childhood. And I think that's just been lurking around wanting to be recognized in a, a song format as well. And the most personal song on the album, which is very much about my childhood, is is called Trapped Inside the World. And that's uh, the second last song, which is essentially about growing up and, and not always having your father around, this, the, you know, and that that was <clears throat> that was the reality for me in this song. But of course, it can be applied to growing up and not having someone around in your life, whether it's a, a parent or a loved one or someone you've lost or and it just deals deals with that kind of childhood helplessness you know when you you are dependent on on the parent and uh you need them and they're not always there you know so there's that aspect on the uh the sort of the sadder side and then when i covered secret love that was entirely because of a childhood memory i have of uh, my parents little record player and these 45 singles that this this red suitcase of 45 singles that they that they had that I would go through and listen to uh, one at a time as as you can only do way before streaming um, and in the middle of all of these records when you know Beatles and the Stones and Simon Garfunkel and Elvis and all the big names uh, there was this South African singer called Gene Rockwell. And I didn't know the difference at the time. I was just a kid listening to, to me, they were all singers. And he had a, a single at the time, whatever it was called. And the B-side was um, a version of Secret Love. So it's just one of those that, again, when I started looking back intentionally, when, when, when I created Waiting for a Voice, the book, um, those sorts of stories were kind of percolating in the background. and and with the themes that I, I kind of touch on with this album and and the book, it really felt like it was high time for me to to record a rendition of that song. Um, and it's done more in in the style of 
that South African singer than it than it is in Doris Day who who made it famous. You know, I love Doris Day's version. I just don't I don't really have a, a Doris Day kind of voice. You know. <laughs> Right, I love Doris Day being brought up in this interview. That's just awesome. Yeah, let's we we could yeah we we should I should, we should think of other people we could uh, we could throw yeah. in. like my Audrey Hepburn fascination. I mean that's uh, that's always a keeper. Yeah. I, I I snuck her into the Something Beautiful video. I I'm drinking out of my favorite Audrey Hepburn mug there. Yeah, so it's 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 all a, a process of of uh, ed educating and illuminating those who don't know. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm reminded of so many Led Zeppelin interviews where Planter Page or somebody is talking about some of the great blues greats of the past, right? And and people and other singers that are just unrelated and their fascination of the '50s music. Oh yeah, I mean if you talk about, I mean some of my absolute favorites. I mean the obvious ones I'm sure you're aware of, but I mean people. I'm also a big fan of people like Nina Simone, and it's just. You know, I think if, if if you are familiar with more than one or two songs of mine, as as I know you are, you can probably hear that and understand that. But I think if people, when they've only just latched onto one aspect of you, they expect you to conform, as it were, to the sets of ideas or ideals, which I don't think any of us listen to the same song every day or watch the same movie every day, you know, and... Uh, or dress in black every day. I mean, I, I can tell you're not. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Likewise, I don't think you should create the same thing over and over again. I think it's very stifling to do so, and and uh, kind, of, kind of depressing, really. I'd, I'd hate to just be stuck doing the same thing. Mm. Over. True. Yeah. Mm. So I remember years back when Arlene Marai and you came out to Austin to visit one time back in 2006 <laughs> to 2011. Mm. We were getting in my vehicle and I played a Demon Hunter song on the stereo. It was probably Heartstrings Come Undone. And you were like, wait, who is this? And I recall you immediately kind of getting mad at Arlene. Why didn't you tell me about these guys? <laughs> what, are your, <laughs> what are your memories of that? And what are your thoughts on Demon Hunter? who has continued to be one of those career artists that keep putting out great new original music. I do remember the moment vaguely, and I also remember you accusing me of stealing some giant statue of a guitar somewhere in <laughs> outside. <laughs> oh yeah, the, the Gibson guitar statues are all around Austin. Yeah, yes, yes, and you posted something about it no longer being there once we had left. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's fine, I've forgiven you for that. Uh, that uh, oh, thanks. Those harsh words. Um, yeah, I've, I've honest, to be to be honest, I, I've not followed Demon Hunter closely um, over the years. I'm, I've always been aware of them, and I think that they are, by all accounts, a, a solid band that keeps doing good work, you know, and I think that... Um, what more could you really aspire to as as an artist? You know, um, it's 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 always incredible how many subgenres and all these different avenues there are that thrive. You know, and I think that's exciting, and it's one of the things that the streaming world actually helps with because you can just tap in. You could take a band like that and you know go ahead and click on them and click on the next well, next band next band, and before you know it, you're down you know, a demon hunter shaped rabbit hole and you've found all sorts of other things. And and that's true for absolutely everybody. So yeah, I enjoy that and certainly applaud them for 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 keeping up with the work, you know. It's I think there are lots of bands, especially in the rock world, that just do victory laps forever. Mm. And yeah, again, that's just not something that appeals to me. So I, I enjoy it when when acts keep pushing themselves and keep creating. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about typo negative. <laughs> okay. Top three to five songs. I must first mention that I um, I had the dubious honor of hanging out with um, Kenny, the guitarist. Kenny. Yeah. Yeah, 
at a at a Schechter party a few years ago. And that was that was nice. He's he's a very a very sweet, very funny man. And I was, I think we we sat at the same table or close to each other. And uh, so that was one of those those moments where you get to go, man, really love your work, love love your band. And uh, so that's my shout out to Kenny. And yeah, typo. Favorite songs in no particular order, I guess. Let's think. Um, well, I'd, I'd probably have to go with Bloody Kisses. And uh, Wolf Moon, I like Wolf Moon. And is it Love Me to Death or Love You to Death? Love Me to Death. Love You to Death. Love You to Death. Yeah, those three spring into mind right now. What about you? Yeah, Love Me to Death would definitely be right up there. And Everything Dies. Uh-huh. Uh, September Sun. And there's so many songs off of Bloody Kisses. Uh, uh, Set Me on Fire. Or the whole Summer Breeze that segues oh, into yeah. Set Me on Fire. Yeah, yeah. Uh, too late, frozen. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, I haven't played that in a while. I'm gonna have to go and dig out some, some, some of those compact discs at some point. Yeah, yeah. I've got their entire catalog on my. Uh, well, starting from Bloody Kisses on, like Origin of the Feces, I just never got into. Yeah. I think I think they developed their their signature sound at Bloody Kisses and and created brilliance from there. But I've got all this on my iPhone, and I all I do is listen to Shuffle. So I have like ten thousand songs on my iPhone, right. and uh, so every song that comes on is a great song. <laughs> and uh, so I couldn't ha ask for a better radio station than my own my iPhone. Right. right. Yeah. Well, why subject yourself to all of the commercials if you can just <laughs> listen to music, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, last official question. Uh, so what does faith mean to you? Uh, what does Christ mean to you? And how have you navigated that over the, the years and the decades as part of your art and your personal life? I think I've always... I think I've always had the same relationship, really. I think that I was fortunate to to not be brought up in a quote religious um, environment, but rather a faith oriented, faith based environment. And I think like, like most people, it's been a journey <laughs> with ups and downs, you know, and, and losing your way and losing your way for periods of a time and, 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 and returning as it were. But I never honestly, I mean, apart from a few very dark times, I don't think I felt separated. Um, I think that it's just been, it's just, faith is just a reality to me. It's not, I know here in the States, a lot of, a lot gets wound up in politics and all of that. And, and, and that doesn't excite me or interest me very much warm my heart very much um so i don't really want to even touch on that other than saying it doesn't warm my heart <laughs> um i think the yeah the relationship has remained essentially and it's um the greatest role model anyone could ever have and um yeah what else can I say, really? Yeah. Well, anything else you'd like to add before I press stop on the recording? Not really. I guess I'd like to add that um, rescue animals if you can. We have we've just rescued our fourth cat. Not yeah. just with two before two years ago and her name's willow and she's the light of my life i, I even included a willow t-shirt on the pre-order for 
Well, it's very stylized, but it's her um, for the nice. house. And um, I won't I won't preach about what to eat and what not to eat and all of that. Um, but yeah, I think animals are our friends, and I uh, I love owls, and I I don't eat them. <laughs> but uh, it's yeah, rescue animals if you can, and um, stop destroying the planet, and be kind and the greatest gift is love and um, love each other love yourself look after yourself and uh, depression should not be stigmatized depression should be dealt with compassion you should have compassion on yourself and compassion with others and don't judge others don't judge yourself you know so when it comes to those shortcomings or those hurdles or those demons or those darknesses be kind to yourself and be kind to others yeah those are my closing words nice i feel like i've been to an ashton knight show and <laughs> i've been able to, i've been able to hear you talk between songs now and a little bit yes throw out some cool stuff Thanks. i love animals too i'm back here in the backyard and i don't know if you heard the chickens earlier but there's some chickens over there and there's some cats uh -huh. in the shade and a dog's been bumping my chair quite a bit. <laughs> yeah lovely yeah and you're still in austin yeah austin area i live in a suburb but yeah, yeah. I've been here for 42 years now wow. wow i still don't have a pickup truck i feel like uh -huh. i'm ripped, ripped off you know uh give it time though you know the, <laughs> the pickup the pickup truck love will hit you when you least expect it <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna hit stop here. Alrighty. Thanks for everything. Thank you. Let's see.